Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. This is Quantum Eraser and Robert Bassano talking about magnetic rail guns that the Navy has been experimenting with. Did you guys know that those things are line of sight even though they shoot 125 miles? Really? Oh boy. Warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push that monitor back out of punching range. And Gladys, uh -huh. Uh -huh. let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Both pieces of information are good. Uh, we want to go with the rail gun because the Navy says they got some. They got a rail gun that can shoot something from a hundred nautical miles, and. Understand, people, there's a difference between an nautical mile and a regular statute mile. So go for it, Jay. Yeah, am I sharing my screen? Yeah, I'm presenting right now. All right, we already went over this before, but let's do it again. Hang so, on, Jay. It's not up on the, uh, on the watch page. Yeah, there you go. It's up on the watch page. Okay. Like I said, we went through this before. I guess we went through it a little bit too quick. Um, let's try it again. See, naval railgun, the projectile travels 5,600 miles per hour. That's Mach 7. You see this thing right here? This is more or less a rifle that fires a bullet, okay? As we said before, this has a range of 125 miles, right? It's right here. We showed the video. They even pointed out. They themselves, the ones that designed the railgun, are just show, they're showing you a shot from Washington to Philadelphia. What's this number here? 125 miles. So we could put that to bed, right? It doesn't even matter. We can go down to 110 miles or, or 100 miles. It makes no difference. So this is a line of sight weapon. Hold on there, quantum dum-dum. The Navy doesn't say the railgun is line of sight. You're the one making that assertion, and it's wrong. Does this look like a line of sight weapon to you? What about this thing? And what the heck is this guy shooting at? The International Space Station? Every one of these weapons are used for over the horizon indirect fire missions, just like the Navy's railgun. This comes from globalsecurity.org. After launch, aerostability, aerothermal heating, effective and survivable guidance and control and lethality issues will be crucial to determine feasibility of an EM weapon for both, listen to this, short direct and longer range indirect fire support missions. I'm going to skip the next paragraph. You guys can read it if you like. The third paragraph, for purposes of clarity. Direct fire engagements are typically considered line of sight or near line of sight. Engagements are from 1 to 40 kilometers in range. That's out to about 24 miles, I think. And can be either defensive or offensive in nature and depending on application include a mix of fixed or moving air, sea, surface, or land targets. Indirect fire or non-line of sight for cannon or naval artillery systems are typically distance, distances starting from hundreds of kilometers or more and primary interest currently is in land-based targets, mobile or fixed asset target sets. The envisioned systems and potential solutions will help meet the needs and so forth and so on. Clearly, they are making a distinction in this article between line of sight and indirect fire missions. They're not going to say it's a line of sight weapon because it's inherent. They're not going to tell you that a rifle is a line of sight weapon because it's a duh because it's a rifle, right? We're putting the, we're going to put the railgun 100 feet above sea level. That's right off the deck of a destroyer or a cruiser and I'm even given the benefit of the doubt with this because I think it's much lower. And according to Mark, it's like 30 or 50 feet. So I'm given 100 feet. So more than enough breathing room here. So, as I said before, 
a target at 125 miles, we can go ahead and pull off the calculator. Right? So the distance is 125 miles. The viewer height or the height of the railgun is 100 feet above, above the deck, above sea level. So we're going to calculate again. So the horizon distance is 12.25 miles. The hidden amount is 8,476 feet. The key, the key one here is this bulge height. And like I said, you go down here. This is where the railgun is on the ship. So this bullet has to go from here to the target at 125 miles. It has to ascend and descend at Mach 7. Now, anyone that can fog a mirror knows that this is impossible. I don't know any other way to put it. Okay? I can't break this down any further. Hey Einstein, did it occur to you that the round coming out of that gun might follow a general ballistic trajectory just like it does out of any gun? It might look like a parabola like those that I'm showing on the screen right now, in which case that hump in the earth really wouldn't be a problem. Nah, I'm sure you didn't think about that, did you? I'll tell you what, we'll get back to this in a minute. So, let's employ some actual science. So, like I said before, we went over this uh, a few times in past videos, the null hypothesis. To do a hypothesis test, Quantum Eraser now goes through and constructs a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis, both of which are fatally flawed. The flaw is this. Quantum Eraser has assumed that somehow or the other the Navy has come up with a gun which fires a projectile which is immune to the effects of gravity. Somehow or the other, that projectile can leave the barrel of the railgun and just fly parallel to the surface of the earth forever. Wow, you know I could disprove that even using your silly relative density disequilibrium nonsense, QE. What in the hell is wrong with you? But let's go ahead and listen to this for a while and then we'll show you what really goes on. Okay, is there any questions about this? I can't break this down any further. I really can't. Go ahead. I'm done. You know, this it's interesting because I want Mark to go ahead and make everyone laugh on the math you did, Mark, with regard to if, if the rail gun was being fired on a round earth, tell everybody where the rail gun would need to be located if it was on a ball. Well, to go as far as, uh, was it 120, 125 miles, it'd have to be 9,600 feet in elevation <laughs> to shoot a straight line. And, and going back to what John was saying about it being, it's the speed that's the key. Exactly. If you're shooting something with a 15 degree up angle at Mach 6, Mach 7, whatever it's supposed to be at, it's going to go further than 125 miles. Exactly. And that's the key. It's, it's a flat trajectory weapon. It uses that speed to go 125 miles in, in almost a flat trajectory because it needs that speed in order to go 125 miles in a, in a flat plane. So you, you can't say that you're going to shoot something at Mach, Mach 6 and put a 20-degree you know, up angle on it. This is where the flaw shows up. I put QE's information in an online calculator from Hyperphysics. Giving QE every benefit of the doubt, I put in a velocity of 2,503 meters per second. That's 5,600 miles an hour. The horizontal range of 231,000 meters is 125 nautical miles. That projectile will be in the air for almost 94 seconds. It will reach a peak height of 10,816 meters. That's about 35,000 feet. I seriously doubt that that 2,000 foot bulge in the surface of the earth is going to be a problem. But let me point something else out. That is assuming that the projectile doesn't lose any speed whatsoever. It stays at 2,500 meters per second all the way from the time it leaves the muzzle 
of the rail gun until it strikes the target. We know that's not going to happen. Wind resistance drag on the projectile is going to slow it down substantially. In fact, I'm not even sure they'll ever be able to get this thing to go 125 nautical miles. But that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is, gravity is affecting this projectile. If you like it better, John, relative density disequilibrium is going to pull the projectile back down to Earth in a parabolic flight path. Okay, I think we've debunked that enough. Later in this video, Robert Bassano talks about circles and measurements, and I think you're going to find it amazing. Apparently, the area of a circle and the circumference of a circle and its radius and things like that just totally confuse this guy. It's hilarious. I'm not going to interrupt it. Just listen. Okay, now check this out, though. I've got Google Earth Pro pulled up right now. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Okay, now look up at the left-hand side right here where it shows radius in feet and area in square miles. Now, every damn space agency, the USGS, U.S. Navy, whoever, Google, they're telling us the Earth is 25,000 miles in circumference. Well, let me show you something here right now. This is the measurement tool for Google. So you, if you want to debunk Google, you debunk them. Don't debunk me. I'm using their shit. Here is 25,000 square miles. Right there, give or take. 25,600 and 76.83 miles. People, that's not even fucking covering Kansas. That's three, that, that's 25,676 miles. Now, yes, that's not yeah, even. Yeah, Robert, Robert, you're using square miles. Yeah, and that's what I said. They said the Earth is 25,000 miles in circumference. Okay? You want me to change it? All right, let's do it. Let's go to when you want me to go. Well, I can I can only go nautical miles or miles. Go to. Uh, let me use nautical miles. Hello. Now you're using square miles. That's what that's what's throwing you off a little bit. Oh, rather it be a little bit or a lot. Square miles. Hold on. The circumference, that's what you want to look at, the circumference. It's right up under. Yeah, let me change. Okay, so let me see here. Go to, do this. I want you to change that circumference. I'm going to go to 25,000 square miles. So, okay. All right, let me go to that. Now type in 2,991,659 feet. Convert that to miles. What do you got? Oh, wrong second. Oh, hold on. I got you. Okay, 25,000 miles to feet is... No, no, no. Take take the circumference of 2,991,659 feet. Convert that to miles. Okay, I'm going to say 3 million. <laughs> Two miles. Five hundred sixty-eight miles. Okay, five hundred and sixty-eight miles. That's what you got? Yeah. Okay, let me keep going. We just keep going. That's why I want to. Okay. Hang on, let me just keep going. Take twenty-five thousand miles to three, right? This will tell you how many feet you need. What okay, is, what do you got? Enter one, in this number. Enter 38,532 feet. 38,532,000 feet. Enter in that. Okay.
got seven thousand two hundred ninety-seven miles. Seven thousand. Yeah. Okay. Let me keep going. So we already got the United States covered, right? So check this out. Let's keep going. Let me cover all the I'm United you, States. Instead of guessing, I'm giving. I I just uh, converted twenty-five thousand miles to feet. How many feet is it? Okay, so it's one point three two with eight zeros behind it. So it's a billion. You said one what? One point three two e plus eight. I'm gonna try to get the long number for that. Yeah, see, that don't make no fucking sense right now. That's crazy. You can't. Even, they won't even let you measure that shit on Google Earth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they won't even let you measure that. The calculations don't add up with their own calculations, do they? <laughs> Holy shit! They won't even. I can't go any further. <laughs> It don't matter I can't go any further. I can't even go outside the earth. <laughs> I can't even get the, the the feet measurement that he just gave me. You can't even go outside of the earth to measure it. What else do I need to do? There's nothing else. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what you need to do, buddy. Just <laughs> keep on ciphering, I guess. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey, Gladys. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We're out of here.